Okay, now let's define the concept of risk aversion. <clears throat> but before this, uh, let me introduce one um, notation. So let's suppose, uh, let's say, E of P uh, denotes the expected value of lottery P, okay? So basically E of P is uh, finite sum, again, assuming that <clears throat> uh, there are finitely many prizes. Um, and so uh, E of P is nothing but uh, summation of P times Z uh, times Z, all right? So it's not utility of Z, but just the value of z. So therefore, Ep is the expected value of lottery. So expected value and expected utility are two different things. Uh, so if p is, if my lottery is, for example, one health probability uh, $50, and then one health probability $100, okay? Well then, the expected value of lottery p is nothing but one health probability times 50, plus one half probability times 100. So in expectation, uh, you're going to win $75. But in expectation, obviously you will never win $75 if you get this lottery. You will either win 50 or $100. But in expectation, $75. Well, expected utility of P, however, is something else. How much utility you get out of this lottery? And to calculate this, it is one half u of 50 plus one half u of 100. So $50 may not be equal to 50 units for you. Its utility may be much less. For example, if you are very rich, as rich as, I don't know, Bill Gates, so $50 could be, I don't know, almost zero uh, sort of utility value for you and $100 same. So therefore you may say the expected utility of this lottery is almost zero. You see what I mean? So, however, if, if, if we are talking about a person like a homeless person who is sort of thinking about this lottery, so the $50 and $100 may be a big deal. And so the utility attached to those numbers could be much higher, even more than 50. All right. So expected utility and expected uh, value of a lottery are two different things. So be careful about it. All right. The second piece of notation, I'm not going to introduce it, but I already did this. I just want to remark that when I have a number Z, we denote this Z in a bracket that basically says lottery where you win or you get uh, a Z dollars with probability one. Okay, so sometimes we call this uh, degenerate lottery. Some people call it sure thing lottery. All right. So the, for sure, you're going to win Z do dollars. Um, all right. So this is what it says. Now the definition of risk aversion. So we say, uh, well, by the way, who is risk averse? A preference relation is risk averse. All right. And therefore, if a person, if a decision maker has this preference relation, well, then we can call this person risk averse as well. But we define risk aversion for preference relation. Mm -hmm. So a preference relation on LZ, the set of all um, lotteries on a set of prizes Z, is called risk averse if, this is a definition, so it's if and only if, if and only if, for any lottery you pick from L of Z, you have to have the following. The sure thing, the sure lottery of EP is at least as good as the lottery P itself. Okay? If this is true for every P, well, then we call this preference relation uh, risk averse. So here, what, I mean, why the concept of risk averse? Well, because this guy, we're asking him to compare two lotteries. On the one side, it's lottery P. For example, half a probability you're going to win uh, $50 and half a probability you're going to win $100. So this is lottery P. You're comparing it with another lottery, E of P, which is basically this. With probability 1, you're going to win $75. So which one are you going to, I mean, which one do you prefer? Well, this guy says, I think, I mean, it doesn't say strictly preferring, but I think 
This lottery, meaning winning $75 for sure, is at least as good as uh, the lottery P. Uh, at least it's not worse than. And the thing is, for any P you give me, I calculate E of P, the expected value of this lottery, and then give this sure lottery, and then the guy will still say, I prefer, I, I think the sure lottery is at least as good as the lottery itself. All right, so if this preference relation says this for every lottery P over this set, well, then we call this preference relation risk averse. So this guy is clearly a not liking risk because here P is incorporating some risk. You may win $50, you may uh, win $100, but nothing is certain. So yes, the idea of winning 100 is awesome, but you may actually end up something less, less than here. So what we do basically, we compare, well, in expectation, you're gonna get the same amount of money, in expectation, in these two lotteries. Which one do you uh, prefer? Well, the guy says, I prefer the one that has less risk. And so we call this guy risk averse. All right, so this is how we define risk aversion. Uh, in a very simple environment where the set of prizes are just, you know, uh, monetary prizes. Uh, obviously, in a more complicated environment, we may define risk aversion uh, slightly bit differently. Okay, so let's do some e exercises. Uh, for example, let's suppose Q is this uh, lottery. So you're going to win $0 uh, with probability one half, and you're going to win with uh, one fourth uh, probability, um, I don't know, at hundred dollars and then you're gonna win with one over four probability uh, two hundred dollars all right so this is the lottery Q okay well in order to say that this guy is risk averse or not uh, or, or well by just looking at one lottery and comparing it with the another lottery of E of Q which basically uh, with probability one you're gonna win what um, so this is a zero, this is 25, and this is uh, 50, so 75. So winning $75 with probability one. So here, if this guy, for example, says, I prefer Q, all right, prefer Q over E of Q, all right, well, then I say this preference relation is definitely not risk averse. All right, because I just found one example where this doesn't hold. And hence, this is enough of evidence to prove that this guy is not risk averse. But in order to prove that somebody or a preference relation is risk averse, I have to remember, be able to make this comparison for every P. And remember, there are infinitely many P's. And so proving somebody or something, a preference relation is risk averse is difficult. But proving that this preference relation is not risk averse is easy because all you have to do is just find one example. Again, so in, in this example, if, if the preference relation says Q is strictly better than uh, sure lottery E of Q, well then clearly this preference relation is not risk averse, okay? Very well. Uh, now we have, oh, by the way, I'm sorry. Uh, let me also say a few things about, uh, because those concepts are defined in some other textbooks. So risk neutrality versus risk loving. Well, um, we can define risk neutrality as E of P is indifferent to P and uh, P is at least as good as E of P. All right, so what does that mean? That means, remember here, the guy, we are offering him two lotteries and in expectation, both lottery P and the sure lottery EP uh, actually offers in expectation the same value. Well, but, but this guy, the risk averse guy, prefers the less risky lottery because it's a sure thing over a risky alternative. Well, we keep offer this guy, you know, again, two lotteries with exactly the same uh, expected value. Well, here, the risk neutral guy should be saying, well, I am indifferent between these two lotteries. And by the way, you know, these are true for any 
lottery Q, uh, P. So for any lottery P in LZ, if the guy says uh, the, the, uh, the sure lottery, I am indifferent between sure lottery and the lottery P itself, well then this guy is indifferent. And if this guy still, I mean, keeps saying he prefers the more risky lottery over the sure lottery, well then uh, this guy should be what we call risk loving, all right? So because he prefers more risky alternative than the, uh, the riskless alternative, all right? Okay, so given that, uh, we have an important theorem. It basically relates how risk aversion, a risk attitude, and the utility von neumann morgenstern utility function U are related. All right, so let's suppose that our preference relation is represented by von neumann morgenstern utility function U. All right, so I can calculate expected utility of the lottery. So then this preference relation that can be represented by von neumann morgenstern utility function is risk averse if and only if uh, this utility function is a concave function over the set of prices. All right, so with this same idea, we can actually say risk neutrality if and only if U is linear and risk loving if and only if U is convex. All right, so what is concave function? What is linear function? What is convex function? So if this is X is the set of prizes and if this is the utility, so this is a straight line is a linear function, right? A concave function is something like this. A convex function is something like this. So the shape of the utility function matters a lot for the risk attitude. All right, I'm not going to give you the full proof but rather, I'm going to sort of uh, make an argumentation about why concavity and risk aversion are related. Okay, so here is uh, the picture I want to draw. Oops. So this is X, the set of prizes. This is the utility of X. So let's suppose my utility function is this. All right, there's this small u function, u of X. Um, examples, and we use those utility functions a lot, like square root of x. So this is a concave function. So risk aversion, uh, I mean, this utility function is going to be representing a, a risk averse uh, a preference relation. U of x is equal to x or some constant times x. So the constant doesn't matter. So this is a, 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 a linear utility function and hence it's risk neutral. So this is risk averse and u of x, for example, x squared is, uh, it's going to represent a preference relation that is risk loving. Okay, so let's suppose this is the utility function u, it's a concave. Well, how is it related to risk aversion? So I'm going to consider a, a very simple lottery, okay? So here's the lottery that I'm going to be considering. P, uh, it's going to give a prize x1 with alpha probability. So say this is x1. And it's going to give prize x2 uh, with 1 minus alpha probability. Okay, so it's very, very simple lottery. Because there are only two prizes. Okay, <coughs> sorry. So here, when I go all the way up here, this is expected utility of prize. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. It's not expected utility. Sorry, 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 sorry. So this is the utility of uh, utility of x1. So this is the von neumann morgenstern utility function, let's suppose. And this is the utility of x2. All right. Very good. So what I want to do is the following. So I'm going to connect these two dots with some linear function, all right, a straight line. Okay, so what is the slope of this straight line? So the slope of this straight line is simple. This part, which is u of x2 minus u of x1, divided by this part, which is x2 minus x1. Agree? Very good. So now, I want to uh, calculate expected value of P. 
What is expected value of P? Remember, it's alpha times x1 plus 1 minus alpha times x2. So, uh, depending on alpha, this expected value is going to be somewhere in between x1 and x2. For example, if alpha is equal to 0, expected value of P is exactly equal to x2. The other opposite is if alpha is equal to 1, expected value of P is exactly equal to x1. Another case when P is, for example, one half, expected value of P is exactly the midpoint between X1 and X2. But anyway, E of P is going to be somewhere in between X1 and X2. Agree? All right. So here, okay, so what do I have? This is what? This is a utility of E of P. Agree? Yep. Now, what I want to show is, or what I want to know, is what this point corresponds to. All right. Let's see. So I would like to know what this point is. Let's call it A. All right. Um, so that means this is, so how can I find A? Well, simple, because use the slope of this straight line. Uh, the slope has to be equal to this part divided by this part, right? So slope is equal to this part, which is a minus ux1 divided by this portion, which is e of p minus x1, right? Now, if you equate this, I mean, they're, they're equal. So this is also the slope of this straight line. And as you see, the slope of this straight line is fixed because it's a, a straight line. It's a linear uh, curve. And so what I can do, I can just solve these two. Uh, I'm sorry. I can, you know, equate these two ratios and solve for A. All right. So let's do it because you'll see where I'm, uh, where, where you'll see what I get. So here, the slope is, remember, u of x2 minus u of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. So it's equal to a is the parameter I don't know and I want to find minus u x1 equals to expected value of p. Well, it's equal to this, right? So the expected value of p is this guy, alpha times x1 plus 1 minus alpha times x2. But this is, in this ratio, I have EP minus X1. So what if I subtract X1 from this? Well, uh, here I have alpha X1, I have minus X1. So if I take it X1 parentheses, I'm gonna have alpha minus one plus one minus alpha X2. But remember, alpha is a number between zero and one, right? Uh, because otherwise this can't be a lottery. So, Therefore, this is negative. So what I can do if I rewrite this, this is one minus alpha, but minus one minus alpha x1 plus one minus alpha x2. Or equivalently, take into one minus alpha parentheses, this is x2 minus x1, all right? So therefore, whenever I see ep minus x1, I'm gonna write this. So it's gonna be one minus alpha uh, x2 minus x1. Remember, x2 and x1 are different, two different prizes, so it's not equal to zero, so they can cancel out. It's not gonna change the equality. So what do I have? Do the cross product. So this is one. Uh, so when I do the cross product, I have one minus alpha u of x2 minus one minus alpha u of x1 equals a minus u of x1. All right, I want to find a, remember? So therefore send this u x1 guy to the left-hand side. So I'm gonna have a equals uh, u of x1 minus one minus alpha u of x1 plus one minus alpha u of x2. So here, u of x1 minus, if you open this bracket, it's gonna be minus u of x1. So this one and this one will cancel out, plus alpha x1. So therefore, A is equal to alpha u of x1 plus one minus alpha u of x2. All right, what is this? Well, this is nothing but expected utility of lottery P, guys. 
all right? So therefore, I can write, so this A is in fact nothing but expected utility of lottery P. Hmm. What do I get? So let me clean up some space. So by definition of risk aversion, if you remember, it was saying that uh, for any lottery, P, where I just picked one lottery, right? Uh, for any lottery P, uh, the expected, uh, the, 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 the sure lottery EP has to be at least as good as uh, lottery itself. But because this preference relation is, under our assumption, is represented by von neumann morgenstern utility function, that means, remember the von neumann morgenstern uh, theorem, that means expected utility of this lottery, EP, is greater than or equal to expected utility of P. So what is expected utility of E of P? Well, it's simple. It's probability of e, this lottery, which is one times utility of E of, well, the utility of, well, the notation here is maybe getting con confusing, but utility of uh, E of P. So E of P is a number, right? It's like a price. Okay, so utility of E of P is this guy. So ignore this one, has to be greater than or equal to uh, expected utility of P. Hmm. So remember this is the expected utility of P and this is the utility of expected value of P. So what we see is exactly uh, what we required. So for at least the lottery P where we assumed alpha probability X1 and one minus alpha probability X2, what we can show is that the sure lottery EP is at least as good as the lottery P itself because the utility of, uh, uh, utility of the EP price is greater than or equal to expected utility of the lottery P, meaning the first number here is greater than or equal to the second uh, number here. All right, you see that? Very good. So what we are going to do, so I mean, this is just a verification that if the U function is risk averse, well, it implies at least for the very simple lottery like this, uh, uh, the definition of risk aversion. But once again, this is not the proof of this theorem. Uh, it's just a verification of it.